I also wanted to reveal our key cast members who will be voicing Mario and his friends in the movie. First, of course. So we go. First, Wait. Of course, is Mario. What? Watching. Yo. <laughs> no way. Yes. 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 No way. <laughs> what? Wait. <laughs> no way. <laughs> they got Charlie Day to play Luigi. What the f will be played by the one and only Jack Black. <laughs> Who's Bowser? Even though this is a Mario movie, <gasps> no. <laughs> no way! Wait. Hi, welcome back. I hope you guys liked the award show, but now it's time to go back to our regular scheduled program. The Super Mario Brothers movie comes out tomorrow. I'm gonna go see it and I'm gonna give you my review. But for now, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of backstory on how this came to be with, the, with my cat. So the Super Mario Brothers movie comes from a line of, well, one other movie. The Mario Bros. movie released in the night, released in the 90s wasn't exactly what we would call a faithful adaptation. It featured Bob Hoskins and Sid the Sloth. It was a Mario movie with the name attached. Of course it did a little bit well, but people weren't exactly satisfied with it. Not that they had much to go on at the time, but I mean, add up to Mario World. So people have always been wanting a faithful Mario adaptation, and the closest thing we have gotten is the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, which also wasn't completely faithful either. But those were two okay things. But since Mario's inception in the 80s to now, we've never had a real faithful Mario adaptation. That will hopefully change with this movie. This movie is being produced by Illumination Studios and Chris Melodondri, and overseen by Shigeru Miyamoto. So hopefully, Shigeru Miyamoto, by the way, is the man who created Mario, so I have high hopes for it. Illumination is not my favorite animation studio, and I have some opinions about animation studios, and Illumination is not highly regarded in my eyes. They're the ones that made the Minions and the Secret Life of Pets and Sing, I guess, but they've adapted things before with the Dr. Seuss books. I just I just hope they do a good job here. Our first news about the hi, the first news about the movie we've got was the official cast release, and uh, well, let's just say people thought it was hilarious. We have Chris Pratt as Mario, Charlie Day as Luigi, which, by the way, perfect casting. Same with Jack Black as Bowser, perfection. Anya Taylor-Joy, I think, could make a pretty good Peach. I, I mean, you've probably seen her. She's been in a lot of recent things, like The Menu and... What was the other one? Amsterdam? She's popped up quite a few times in recent years. The one that people were really concerned about was Chris Pratt. And uh, his little announcement after that... It's a me, a Mario. Didn't give people much hope. Let's just say that. All news was pretty silent until we got the first trailer, where people were actually pretty happily surprised by it. I was too. Our first glimpse was Bowser. People thought that was really good, but people were still laughing at Mario's voice. But I think as the trailers have gone on, people have started to warm up to it. I have. And plus, I just love Chris Pratt and everything he does. So it was never really a concern with me. For me, I should say. And it looks better than any other Illumination movie I've seen. Animation-wise, it looks beautiful. They said they've created a whole new tactics that they started to use. You can see it a little bit with the latest Minions Rise Gru. You might remember it from the Gentle Minions craze. And I honestly think the Super Mario movie could be good. And the marketing, I just have to say, is brilliant. Behind me is the Super Mario Brothers plumbing website, something they released alongside the Super Bowl and this awesome trailer with the old school Super Mario Brothers Super Show inspired music. Well, it is the music. I just think there's going to be a lot of cool little hints and nods that fans are going to love. I haven't seen the movie yet, so of course I don't know. But from early reviews, yeah, I've heard that. So far, it's gotten rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. Big surprise. I don't really give much credence to critic scores. So I'm going to go into it with an open mind. I'm very excited. 
very hyped for my recent trip to Universal. Go watch the video where I go to Nintendo World, where the marketing was everywhere. I'm, I'm really excited. I, do I think it will be as good as Puss in Boots Last Wish? I have hopes. Mario is one of my favorite franchises of all times, and I have really high hopes for any time Mario has an outing, whether it be video games, movies, or TV shows. And I think Mario can make the perfect movie. We'll just have to see how it does. Well, I just got back home from the Mario movie, and let's just say, it was awesome. Honestly, this is a really good movie. Please go see it. I'm gonna try to contain myself a little bit and break it down piece by piece, but I may be geeking out just a little bit during this review. So, sorry, I guess. But this movie's really cool, guys. Please go watch it. First, let's talk about the story. Now the story, of course, is integral to any movie, but it's a Mario movie. What do you think this story is going to be? Critics? Pretty much, it's Bowser's kidnapping plot. Kind of. They expand on it a little bit more. Now I'm not going to break down the story beat by beat because then we'll just be here all day. Please go watch this movie. Oh yeah, spoilers! Spoiler alert! So, you're warned. But, pretty much, Bowser kidnaps Luigi, Mario needs to go rescue Luigi, Peach needs to defend- Peach needs to defend the Mushroom Kingdom from Bowser, Bowser wants to marry Peach, he almost does, and then they all come together and save the day. The end. And that is in its most basic form. But I want to spend time deconstructing what makes this movie work so well. And how awesome it is. Starting with the characters. So first we got the main man himself, Super Mario, played by Chris Pratt. Now, obviously his story is a little cliche, but I like it. So his main conflict throughout the story is obviously rescuing the Ouija, but the inner conflict he has is what his dad says, that he's bringing his brother down with him by going on this business venture and trying something new. He, his dad's pretty much disappointed in him, and that makes Mario sad. When he gets to the Mushroom Kingdom and loses the Ouija, he doubts himself while he's trying to rescue him, but throughout the entire thing, Princess Peach keeps encouraging him, and eventually, after they save the day, his dad tells him that he's proud of him. And loudly proclaims, that's my son! And it's a really heartwarming moment. But, well, Wario has to go through a lot of trials and tribulations, and it's very reminiscent of the classic hero's journey story type. And, I mean, it works. Mario's motivations make sense. And I like the change from Peach to Luigi because that gives different context to who he's rescuing. With Peach, it wouldn't really make sense if he arrived in the Mushroom Kingdom and then he had to go save the princess who he has no connection to or anything else like that. Having it be Luigi, he already has an emotional connection. We've been watching these characters for the past 15 minutes interact and have fun and try to get their plumbing business together. But, so it's really emotional when they get separated. There's a line in the movie where Mario says, uh, I've never, or, yeah, Mario says, I've never been separated from my brother this long. Like, man, these guys are more than just brothers. They're best friends. That's, it's a beautiful thing. And Mario makes all these friends on his journey, but he's always still trying to rescue Luigi. Let's talk about Luigi. Luigi, Mario's brother, is, uh, the more subdued of the two. Mario's kind of impulsive and does things on the fly and Luigi follows and that's why his dad was disappointed in him because they quit uh, the wrecking crew job to become plumbers. So Mario's impulsiveness affects the story while Luigi is a little more scared to do things. And Luigi is, uh, well, he's scared. 
Luigi being scared is the classic Luigi's Mansion archetype that we've seen a million times. And the thing that I think is so effective about Luigi's Mansion the story is the is the brotherly connection of Luigi trying to rescue Mario. And I think that's what makes the stories in those games so compelling, to me at least. And they brought that over here, but reversed it with Mario trying to rescue Luigi. Ultimately, I think it was the better decision to have Mario rescue Luigi instead of Peach. When Luigi gets kidnapped, he has this very emotional uh, flashback. When him and Luigi were babies, we see baby Mario and baby Luigi, and Luigi is getting bullied, and the kid knocks down his Lego castle. Mario comes in and beats up the kid, and they just smile at each other. And it's a really sweet moment that I really think is very effective. And, you know, I never thought I'd get emotional over Baby Luigi and Baby Mario. Two characters I really hate in the games, but it works here. Speaking, and Luigi being scared kind of pays off at the end when he's no longer scared of Bowser and he beats him up. But, yeah, Luigi gets put into the dark place where he gets attacked by dry bones and shy guys and he gets kidnapped and he's scared of Bowser. And then he goes into the cages where the depressing Luma is. And at the end of the story, him and Mario get the superstar and defeat him. They win the day. Well, that leads to the question, what does Peach do in this story? She's kind of the mentor Yoda figure to Mario. She's the one who helps him out throughout his journey. He arrives there looking for her help. And originally I thought it was a little weird for them to immediately connect and for her to trust him. But it makes sense. There's the scene in the fire flower field where Peach talks about her backstory and how she doesn't know how she got him. And she's the only human in the Mushroom Kingdom. And it's it's kind of a, it kind of makes sense. We've never learned Peach's backstory in the games, we kind of got Mario's from Wrecking Crew in, in the Mario Brothers game. But we never really know how Peach got there. That's an interesting story. She just showed up in, out of a tube one day and the Toads took her in. Which makes sense. It makes sense why she's so capable of fighting in this movie. So, I thought that was a really emotional story and her connection with Mario was really sweet. But when Peach and Mario get to the Kong Kingdom and Peach starts with the diplomatic reasons why the Kong should do join them. Mario takes a more un unorthodox approach, which is uh, shown in his ability to just go on, go with things on the fly and be creative on the fly. Impulsive, that's the word I'm looking for. When he challenges uh, Cranky Kong to fight Donkey Kong. And then that shows, and that shows Peach that there are more ways to do things than just be diplomatic. Though she was going to fight Bowser no matter what, I think this uh, ignites a spark in her that really lets her deny Bowser when the time comes. And when that time does come after the Rainbow Road section, I think it's done. I think she makes the right decision and fights Bowser. Let's talk about Toad. He's easily the least developed character, which is kind of sad. We see him for quite a while, but I just don't feel like him and Mario or him and Peach have too much of a connection. I think he disappears at right before the wedding scene. I don't think he comes back in for the finale. So maybe that's why it feels a little underdeveloped, at least from what I remember. So don't quote me on that, but... I still think he was an enjoyable addition. I think Keegan-Michael Key did a brilliant job with him. And I think he would become Captain Toad later down the line. And then we have Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong is this egotistical, crazy, not crazy, he's this egotistical showboat kind of character. Kind of like a WWE wrestler a little bit. He does the peck dance. <laughs> and, uh... He fights Mario, and Mario puts him in this place. And Mario and Donkey Kong have this really neat dynamic where Donkey Kong hates Mario, and they keep rescuing each other. And I think their relationship really works when they get eaten by the eel, 
and then they ride the barrel out of the eel's stomach and fight together. I think that worked really well. I just wish you got a little bit more of Donkey Kong since he kind of gets introduced halfway through the movie, but for what was there, I think it works exceptionally well. I love the dynamic, it's great. Then we have Bowser. Easily the best character in the movie. Bowser was already one of my favorite characters in fiction general. I love Bowser, his design is great, and I always will play as him if he's available in a Mario thing. But Jack Black was the perfect, the perfect pick for Bowser. He brings such a good energy to the role. I'll talk about the voice cast in a second, but Bowser's... Nintendo pulled a fast one on us. I'll give him that. We all thought that they were scrapping Bowser loving Peach. That storyline got me because he's not kidnapping Peach anymore. But that's still his motivation. He's trying to impress her, and it's exceptionally hilarious. Bowser kind of has two modes in this movie. Menacing and adorable. When he's menacing, he is terrifying. When he's ripping people apart, when he's spouting fire everywhere, so good. But when he talks about Peach, it is single-handedly the cutest and funniest parts about this movie. I won't go too much into it, but he sings! Oh my, that was the one thing I wanted. And it's very tenacious D. It is hilarious. And there's, there's a scene in this movie where he's practicing what he's going to say to Peach on Kamek, and Kamek's all in the Peach dress. It is hilarious, man. This movie is so good, and the voice acting is just so well done. And I love when he's insecure. When he learns about Mario and Peach traveling together, and then he connects Luigi, and, <laughs> and he's, he goes... Do our princesses attracted to him? And Luigi goes, only if they have good taste. <laughs> it's, this movie is so good. I love it. Bowser, no, he may not have a real arc. He's kind of a villain throughout. But the heartbreak he goes through when Peach says no, it is so good, guys. Please go watch this movie if you haven't. I'm spoiling it for you. Go watch this movie. Let's talk about the incredible voice cast in this movie. So, the thing that I started this episode off with, and the thing that nobody was happy for, was Chris Pratt as Mario. Personally, I love Chris Pratt, so it didn't matter to me, and I thought he would do a good job, and he did. The Brooklyn accent is most apparent on him, and I think it works for the most part. I forgot it was Chris Pratt, so there you go. I mean, I think people forgot, but like, the guy's an experienced voice actor, he did the Lego movie. Charlie Day was an inspired choice for Luigi. His normal voice, that, like, yeah, that's Luigi. Anya Taylor-Joy as Peach, like, it was good. I thought it was pretty well. Uh, more people, people would probably think that they would go for somebody with a higher pitch voice, but I think the way she did it was just good. It was good. Ooh, it was pretty good. Uh, Keegan-Michael Key as Toad works surprisingly well. He actually tries to do a voice. And, hi. And I think it works pretty darn well. Of course, the standout is Jack Black, as always. A very talented voice actor and just actor in general. Like, he's had experience. He's Kung Fu Panda. Hi. He does, he's great at Bowser. The side characters have... Side characters are pretty good too. The guy who plays Kamek is actually that like yeah, that that sounds like that would be Kamek's voice. And uh, the guy who plays Spike's pretty darn good too. The only one that I'm a oh, and Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong just works. He even does his iconic laugh. <laughs> it's pretty funny. He does it twice, and <laughs> well. Yeah, that's Seth Rogen. The only one I'm kind of mixed on is Cranky Kong. I think the voice is a little bit annoying. I don't remember who did it. 
but like it's passable. Some of the lines I gave him weren't great either, but I mean, it worked. So yeah, the voice cast was surprisingly solid. Jack Black, of course, being the standout, but everybody else did a pretty darn good job as well. So let's talk about the visuals of this movie. They're pretty. They're beautiful, actually. This movie looks better than most modern animated movies nowadays, especially compared to what Disney and Pixar is putting out. Well, okay, maybe not Pixar. But I prefer it over Pixar's realistic graphics. These are much more fun. It's very colorful, but not too colorful. The color palette's really pretty. You can see it in some of the footage I've been playing over this video, but it's, it's just a beautiful movie overall. I want to talk about the character designs a little bit, because people were all up in arms a little bit about it. But I do think just it takes a little bit of time to get used to it, but you get used to it pretty darn quickly. And I wouldn't be mad if they started using these new designs in the games, especially Bowser's. I think all these characters could use an update, honestly. We haven't had an update, to, a big update to any of the characters' designs since, what, the GameCube? I think it's about time. I said we should just use these designs. I think they're a lot more expressive than they otherwise would be. From the Mushroom Kingdom to Bowser's Castle, it's beautiful. The deserts, the oceans, the jungles, everything about this movie is just pretty. It's really beautiful. And I just, I hope they continue. I hope we get a Mario too. I want them to, I want to see this world expanded. One of the coolest parts about the movie, in my opinion, the references. Now I know the Easter eggs and references are a little overdone, but I just find them really enjoyable. From the little nods and hints to other Mario games, to other Nintendo games. One of my favorite ones is the Punch-Out Pizzeria, which I thought was a really smart idea. I mean, you're in Brooklyn, what other game takes place in Brooklyn? Punch-Out. There are portraits all over the walls of Punch-Out characters and different ducks, as well as as well as newspapers about Little Mac. Same in that same pizzeria, there's also a Jumpman arcade machine, which is just the original Donkey Kong arcade machine, and I think that's really cool. As well, there's a Duck Hunt Tavern and a few other references scattered around. In Mario's room, he plays an NES, and he's playing Kid Icarus, the original. And NES Kid Icarus. That's so cool. I, they don't really reference any of the bigger games like Kirby, Zelda, or Pokemon. They focus on the smaller ones. There was an R Wing on his TV and a poster for F Zero racing on his walls. I'm sure there are tons of other ones, but those are just some of the ones I got. Luigi's phone makes a GameCube intro noise. There are a lot of little vi uh, there are a lot of little visual cues too. When they go to their first job, they hop around things just like World 1-1, and they end at a castle-themed restaurant. Like, that's so creative and cool. Oh, and the sound effects, too. They pull some sound effects straight from the games, especially some of the jumping sound effects. It's just such, it's so cool. And the little neat additions to detail are just the things I love about this movie. You can tell it was made by fans, people who really love these Nintendo games, and it shows. I, I just love it. I guess that can transition us right into the music. Hey guys, I also forgot to mention the power-ups. They were also awesome. We got the mushroom, we got a mini mushroom, we got an ice flower, fire flower, cat bell. What else did we see? Oh, the tanuki suit. Lots of cool things. Oh my god, the music. Some of the, one of the coolest parts about this movie is its music. The score is phenomenal. Please put it on streaming platforms, Nintendo. But they take little bits and uh, motifs from the games, like the underground do 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 do, all throughout this movie. It's so good. I counted lots of little uh, little musical cues. From World 1-1 to 3D World to Galaxy to Odyssey. And 
My highlights, though, are the Super Mario Brothers Super Show theme in the commercial, and the Mad Men at Illumination and Nintendo did it. They added, they added the DK rap. They actually put it in the movie when Donkey Kong gets introduced. Here we go. This, honestly, awesome score. Koji Kondo helped with it. One of the original Nintendo uh, sound developers and soundtrack artists. He helped and supervised the uh, process of making this soundtrack and it pays off tremendously. It is beautiful. But easily, the highlight of the entire thing is the Superstar theme. So, now this is spoiler, spoiler territory. I'm gonna tell you about the finale, and they have not shown the finale at all to this movie. Which is another big turn of fate, because we thought the Rainbow Road section was gonna be the finale. It's not. This is your last chance. Here we go. They remix the Superstar theme when Mario and Luigi grab the Superstar and it is pure bliss. Chills down my arms. And they beat up Bowser with it and it is so good. It is one of my favorite parts of the movie. It, you just see it, Bowser's flames disappear and do 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 do. Mmm, beautiful. It is awesome. Another highlight of it is Jack, I believe I talked about this earlier, Jack Black's song, Peaches. So tenacious D, so good. His voice is phenomenal and I love it. And this whole section is just very funny. Bow when Kamek interrupts him, Bowser says, come jam with me. And he goes doo 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 on the piano and Kamek goes dun, doo 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 doo. Them. It is so good. This whole movie is so good, man. You just gotta go see it. And I'm not being paid by Illumination. In fact, I'm not getting paid at all for these videos. So, I don't know, you can like and subscribe if you want. That would be real nice. But, oh man, this movie is just spectacular. Something that I'm a little bit more mixed on are the needle drop moments. So they play, Illumination likes to do this a lot, they play popular songs, over sections, and honestly, I would rather just have the Mario music. It's, it works just fine. But the selections they did make weren't too intrusive. They didn't like play the whole songs or anything, but the sections where they happen, they fit, I guess, when they're in Brooklyn going to their first job. They played the BC Boys, No Sleep Till Brooklyn. That was pretty funny. Uh, they played Thunderstruck at one point by ACBC, Mr. Blue Sky. They did Take On Me for some reason when they entered the Kong Kingdom, like... That really has no significance to the plot. It's a song about romance and you're just driving through the Kong Kingdom. And like... Okay. You could have had the D- you could have had the DKC theme song playing, but whatever. So, the needle drops are a little bit distracting, but that's, that fuels the most illumination E section out of all of them, so I can stand it. Overall, I think this is a brilliant first attempt for, from Nintendo to try to make a movie, and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. It's everything I could have wanted from a Mario movie, and more. I think the critics are crazy for this, for what they've been rating this movie. People have been saying it has a paper-thin plot and no emotion, but I wholeheartedly disagree. This movie has so much love and passion behind it, and you can just see it in the movie. Which isn't something you can say for a lot of Illumination movies, but honestly, I think it was great. I highly encourage you to go see it, and I hope it makes a lot of money so we can get a sequel. And if, we, and if we ever do end up getting a second movie, or even a movie based off another Nintendo property, I'll be happy if we can make this into a cinematic universe of sorts. Let's do it. These characters are right for this. 
It's an untapped mine. Critics are saying are now going back and saying that the original Mario movie was better, which is just objectively not true. I have a soft spot for the original, but I mean it doesn't even compare to this. I'm sorry. The original was weird and crazy and nothing like Mario. This this is the Mario movie. And I hope you guys all have a fun time in the theaters watching. Because there, there's been no better experience for me in this year of movies than sitting down in that theater with the huge screen on opening day, the bunch of happy people and screaming happy kids ready to see their favorite Italian plumber on the big screen. This was the Mario movie I hoped to have when I was a kid. And now, it's a reality. Thank you for watching. See you guys next time.